Welcome back, everybody, to Face It TV. And you know, for I haven't asked you any questions yet, so I'm going to want to ask you a quick question about sure. something. Um, so, you have interviewed very, very many people, and you are quite a, a very well, a very well-known interview. I think you have a lot of respect from many people for that for that uh, part of your profession. Hopefully. So, <laughs> so w who would you say was some of the most interesting people you've interviewed, and why? I mean, in general, I think the most interesting people are usually people who are like naturally quite eloquent. And so, like for me, Rafa's always been one of the most interesting players to interview because I know if I talk to Rafa, I can sort of go almost as deep as I want and he'll even still have levels further that he can take it. And so when you set it up with him, like you sort of have an implicit permission to really go as deep as you want to go. And so if you've ever really wondered about like what was he doing in this situation or what was the motivation, it's not going to get just, like he's not just going to be making up a simple answer. He'll usually have mm. like something planned, like, oh, my actual theory was to do this. And so those are sort of my favorite people where you can sort of get to stuff that you never really, you might not even have thought of before the interview, but it can potentially be like surprising, but also like the things you wanted to know about as well. And so other than that, it's obviously nice to also do like entertaining people who have a, a nice personality. But I think for me, it's like the tactical people are the best. Yeah. Like I want to talk to some minds when I do like an interview, I think. Mm, definitely. And is the, so when we, when we see a foreign interview in Kula, because I know you're talking to me, it's something that you've been looking to do for a long time. And uh, do you, how would you go about that? Because I think a lot of people would be very interested in that. Because Kula is someone that hasn't really, I think, been very well represented as no, far as no, interviews go so, yeah. because of the language barrier. Well, plus the thing with Kula is because he's naturally a personality and he's a sort of an entertainer and a showman, it's very easy for interviewers to be a bit lazy and kind of think, oh, well, all I'll do is I'll toss him a few softballs. Like, oh, what do you think of strengths beating you last time? So mm -hmm. he'll say a funny quotable and then we all get a laugh out of it. But if, we, if you're with someone like Kula, where obviously English isn't his native tongue. If you want to get a really like interesting answer out of him, I think you have to like set it up really well. So for example, if you know kind of the things he'd normally say as a throwaway or a defensive remark, you kind of have to set it up so you take that away. Like you say, you know, okay, so I know you don't necessarily respect Strengths' play, for example, you'd say, but I mean, what is it about him that actually like allows him to compete with you? Like what is it, what does he have going for him that makes him like comparable to your style when you're so superior in certain other areas? Mm. Like you have to set it up so it's kind of throwing him off a bit, but then it's not the fact that you're tricking him into saying something, it's the fact that no one's ever sort of asked them in that direction. And so the answer they give is going to be fresh even to them, you know, because they have to think of it on the spot a bit. Yep. And as long as they have a good mind, those are like the ideal people to ask those questions of because they'll come up with something interesting because they, they have the mind for it, you know. Yeah, for sure. I'm, you know, we, need to we should continue this train of thought because really interesting topics. And of course, you have so much experience in this area. But let's uh, not keep our players waiting too much longer. And we have Fears and Luke, of course. They're on toxicity and we're just letting them know we're ready right now to get things underway. And Fears is a Russian guy who has been playing quite a bit of jewel here and there. I think he's been to some lands as well, but um, he's not particularly notable just yet. Maybe this is his, his time to shine. We also have Luke here, the Irish player, who has also started to get his uh, game going again after some inactivity. So let's see how things transpire between the two of these players. We're off the start with Fears here. He gets the fated red armor railgun spawn. And the plasma been going to work too, but look at that. Luke coming in straight away with the aggressive rocket launcher. A facial straight going onto his opponent there as Fears was brandishing that plasma gun, but it didn't seem to save him. He did a decent amount of damage, but Luke definitely came off better there. And a great little jump shot with the railgun from Luke there as he really makes the start of this game go his way. He's got the red armor spawning. It's, of course, a bit of a death trap, but Luke is not in position to punish the pickup from Fears. It's such a horrible position, and Fears gets away. And the engagement there going straight on to the favor of Fears and the defensive rockets. The only thing to save Luke, but great switch from Fears. Just putting a rail straight through the body of his opponent. And that's going to be the kill. But he's not very uh, he's not very strong after that. So he's got to try and consider his options a little bit for health and armor. As he goes for this red armor. Now he's in bad spurt, except that that guy's actually even lower health. And Luke making an aggressive move there, it's paying off slightly. The plasma gun is such a, w a powerful weapon to use in spots like this where your opponent is super low. And Luke coming in with the lightning gun, can he finish things off? Oh, but Fizz again just pulls out the rail gun and that stops Luke dead in his tracks. Luke has to rethink this now as he has brandishing that rocket launcher over at the red mega side. That picks and he up can that basically mega. get anything he wants because Fizz is so low. Definitely. And is the right choice to get the Mega, as always the best one to go for on Toxicity, you maintain that position, always have opportunity for damage on the guy picking up that, that red in that horrible, it's, it's more or less a death trap, you know, oftentimes, and here is Luke now getting the LG, getting the rocket jump to get position, 
Use that stack to buy some position. Always a good move. And they're waiting for that red armor. This could be very dangerous. If Fizz is continuing to hit like he's been hitting with the railgun. And there's one connection. Not able to get any more though. And Much too low health to actually pursue it. That's his problem at the moment. I'm going to say Luke probably shouldn't have found himself waiting so long at the red armor. Look how much damage he's taken. And Fizz stealing away the mega as well. Oh my goodness. It's just... It's not looking great here for him. And Fears now is trying to make good. And he does manage to do just that with the lightning gun there as his opponent tries to just jump up at him. And it's a futile attempt to, to get a frag back from Luke here. Luke's got to start making smart, smarter decisions, trying to fend off his opponent now. Look at, uh, walk through the gaps in Fears' angles that he's covering. Fears is going to pick up that yellow. Great position on this Mega. He's got the entire map to play with it, with a position like this with all the weapons. And Fear uh, has shown the much better aim so far. And this is such... Look at that. Look great. Rocket jump just flying into the face of Fears. That was actually quite a nice play because Luke... At, whoa, he's doing so much damage and Fears is just going to melt in the acid there. An uh, amazing play from Luke to go for that rocket jump because he's at such a disadvantage uh, at that, that mid-long range to Fears' superior positioning. So he just eliminated the position, went for that, that rocket jump. It's risky. Sure, if Fears hits him midway, it's risky, but it, it's a risk that you know, paid off for him. And look at, look at that. Fears coming in now to try and defend the red it's not going to happen Luke just easily bats him away gets another frag and now Luke is trying to pull things back but can he keep it going this is his rail low and that was definitely a very important one to hit because if you hit that he could continue his momentum and just pump up the aggression make things now he has really to make sure he doesn't give this red away he just gets it beforehand the same mistake Fears made before where he, he tried to bounce him up but he let him get the red and so he's a little bit too much armor and great damage coming in from Fears with the rockets and Luke really just getting punished for missing in spots where maybe he shouldn't be as Luke now picks up even more he's looking pretty good 140 armor there he goes aggressively onto Fears Fears dancing around on the stairs switching to the rail this time it's not going to save him as Luke manages to finally get the frag he does end up taking a rail and that's going to be painful but he's alive oh there comes Fears and that direct rocket will save Luke and just oh stops my over god it. <laughs> and he almost killed died anyway in the, the slime yeah, almost, almost, so close. And Luke's got to know it. He needs to keep the pressure going. There comes that pressure. And that is going to be the frag as well. It's a great start from Luke to recognize when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive, as Kula likes to say. But it's such, it's such a truth here. You can't let your opponent just recover. You I mean, there's been the so much going. action on this map already. It's only four minutes in because they've gone for every single red, basically. Like, both players don't, don't just give it up. They both attack regardless of who's in control. And it's a 4-4 scoreline here in Toxicity, approaching halfway. And here comes Fizz aggressively again, brandishing. Just with the LGs out, he just doesn't even care. Just looks so cocky with how he's just it fighting. Be a kill here. Yeah, Luke takes his just lead. running around with the Relgan out of point blank range. Oh, there might be another one now. Great stuff from Luke. And Luka. he gets the red immediately. Fizz has got to be careful with, the, with like letting situations like that happen. Luke just made a complete fool of him once again. And the Luke thing is, beforehand they tended to trade when they rushed each other like that, so it actually wasn't so bad. But that's the first time Luke's actually really got like a little roll going though. And he's actually waiting around way too long here, waiting for that yellow armor. This, look at his stack. This is to all time he's wasting. Finally, he could be yeah, pressuring his opponent. He doesn't have the mega timer, I don't think. And I mean, look, Fizz is just standing there at red. He gets one rail off, but that could have been so much more. And instead. Fizz does get the red armor, and now he gives Fizz more opportunity to deal damage back to him, but Luke is at least doing a great job here, managing to just whittle down the stack of Fizz slowly, point by point, and there another rail, eight points of health left for Fizz. Luke has got to know he's it's screaming. Be battle for RA here. Oh, great play from Luke there to remove that 50. Oh, but this, oh great, he manages to rail him at least. Would have been horrible to see him lose that arm, all that armor. There's no health in there. Fizz coming aggressively again. Luke yeah, kind, kind of baited him by making it look like he was about to go through the teleporter, so he dropped down. And made the second shot basically just a more simple protection shot. Nice little display of aim coming in from Luke now. As he started to warm up, he's close to 60% rail, so he's definitely hitting his shots again. The flat rocket jump, not quite going to reach. Gets the jump shot with the rail once again though. Look at him, it's like he's playing an aim map at the moment. It's like he's starting to go, okay, I don't even care about dueling anymore. Let's just run around. Let's just aim at stuff. And Toxicity can be like that sometimes. Let's see if he keeps up the trend. Here he goes again, straight on to Fears. Mm, just misses the angle there with the railgun. Oh, there comes the grenade, the rockets. Fears manages not to escape. Almost around the corner, but not quite in time. Luke is there. 
with the punishing blows with the railgun and the red is up on the spot of course luke can just maintain position okay here you go fizz have some rails and fizz takes uh, just uh, just the one but that's good enough for luke because look at the trade he gets there oh but fizz actually coming in with an amazing engagement with the lightning and that's absolutely perfect look how much damage he did and how much against how much he received and now luke is in a lot of trouble he manages to pick up the 50 to save himself but fizz has actually put himself in a position now to take control back Ah, and crucially, he didn't just run straight in for the red there, so he actually couldn't escape. Oh, but Luke manages just to pick up the... Oh, but he gets the kill anyway, Fizz. Plasmid. Plasmid gun's such a beautiful weapon. I love it when people use it effectively. And here it is, comes onto Luke once again. Luke, he's got a decent lead. He's got a five frag lead going into this one now. And two the thing is, though, since they've tried to battle for every red, like, will nice. Luke play a defensive game? Because if he goes back to just like going for every single red, like he's doing now, I think actually it's Luke Fear's chance to get right back in the game because he's going to get a couple of early kills with the time running down. Yeah, Luke has to make, make sure he doesn't make the mistake of being too defensive to give the entire map away. But instead, okay, don't be too, don't don't care about your lead too much. You don't have to protect it by not giving away any frags. You can give away a couple frags to make sure that you break their momentum and their control. So Lucas to make sure he doesn't fall into that overly passive mindset because then he will give everything away and it will just be a matter of time until Fizz makes that tying frag and then has control afterwards. But here comes Fizz aggressively with the rocket jump. Up onto Luke. Luke with some good defensive rockets. Oh, fantastic stuff from Luke there as he manages to make an app in just about to eliminate any kind of momentum for Fizz with those rockets. So powerful there, as now Fizz comes out of the teleport. I think time left, he really needed to have that last kill as well. Definitely. And he, he, he was starting to, Fizz was starting to really build control, so it was a perfect moment. And Fizz has to be absolutely gutted after that. And it's still four frags though, so on a map like Toxicity, where you can really control the spawns very well, and you can see so many angles, it's very doable, but Fizz has to make that initial kill. He needs an initial kill, can he get it? He has all the weapons, but just lacking the armor and health to really survive a prolonged battle with his opponent as he now moves on to this red armor. And this is really going to be his last ditch effort. He's going to make it happen, and he's going to make it happen pretty much now. There's no more time to wait. Here he comes on to Luke, just has to go for it. And he's, and he's going to just be deterred once more. And so it's it, quite strange he'd bother actually pulling back. I think we had to go then to get the kill. Yeah. And like, there's nothing to gain by pulling back there. And here we go. He's going to try again, but you know, just, it's just over at this point. He calls good game. And that's going to be, it looks like Luke the victor, 5 frags, 13 to 8 there, and uh, Luke definitely didn't have a good start there, but he managed uh, to pick things up. I mean, you could see his aim really heated up towards the middle part of the game when he finally got the lead, because beforehand it really seemed like both players were totally willing to just let aim decide this game, like they were constantly engaging with like half stacks, neither of them would wait for like craft a perfect situation that I'm going to go in, or the guy in control be like, okay, I'm in control, I'll play a bit defensively, both totally willing to trade back and forwards for the RA, and it made, for a, it made quite an entertaining game, but it also meant that it was really hard to know who was going to win even until the last sort of two minute period. Mm. Definitely. I have to say that I like to see that I like I like that Luke's form is actually getting a lot better. He was a player that was actually showing a lot of promise quite a long time ago and he actually had a bit of inac inactivity and kind of dropped off a little bit. So it's good to see him coming back into into the swing of things. I'm just going to check to see what the next game will be here. And we actually have Guard versus Etty and Guard is of course a really good player. He's one of the, the few players that can have really just phenomenal games against Kula and really test Kula's mental game as so he has such a great style to play with and uh, are you familiar at all with God? Yeah, I mean I've seen him in the, especially in the earlier days of Quake Live where he was seen to be like a rising star and people thought like oh here's another like Eastern European who's going to be good but I mean he's obviously also being fairly famous for like dodging the lands so we've never really got to see what he could have become as like a like would he have mm. become like sort of an evil type character if he'd gone to these big lands so Always been a good online player, though, I think. Like, I think not having the pressure when you play online, like, really helps his style flourish. Yeah, and, you know, actually, I just have to make a quick point um, about um, our friend Fraze, who in Australia in the Sidlan Cup actually managed to take that one. And, of course, it's no surprise, Fraze, that, you know, when he came to Europe. So I don't know if you know about Fraze. Fraze was a player that actually came over to Europe and just started to just dominate everyone. Like, he was, okay. he was, he was beating people, you know, on the level of, of Cypher. And, you know, sure, maybe not a full-strength Cypher, but, you know, he's showing... Like that, he came from Australia, a place with a scene that was really not, you know, blooming. It's not, you know, not nearly yeah. as much as Europe. Didn't have the wealth that Europe has of players. But he's managing to compete with like the top 
top eight players, which is amazing. But he managed to win against uh, his brother and his brother beating Dan the King as well in the double limb there. So cool, cool bit of information there for anyone who's following Quake. You can check out Each Reality to find out more about that. It's assuredly on the news post. But we'll go to a quick break and we'll come back with, of course, Guard versus Etty. Etty always an interesting one. So don't go anywhere, guys. <laughs> 